Hello and welcome everybody to episode 38 of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth. This is the show where we review this week's news in the world of quantum and its impact on the world of cybersecurity, AI, and more. And with us to discuss this week is Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations at Q-Secure. Brandon, welcome. Thank you, Bill. And returning uh, expert, Elizabeth Green, SVP of Customers and Ecosystems at Q-Secure. Elizabeth, welcome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me again. All right. Welcome to you both. So interesting news. Uh, last week in Quantum, two big articles. One is Microsoft announced the best performing logical qubits on record. And folks of the show, uh, friends of the show, will recognize that we sort of keep a leaderboard of the improvements in quantum. So folks will see uh, a little bit more uh, progress on that. And also Google's quantum computer reduces errors as it scales up. And Elizabeth will give us some color on that. Let's get started by talking to our experts. So on the Microsoft piece, Microsoft is announcing the best performing logical qubits on record and will provide priority access to reliable quantum hardware in Azure Quantum. Brandon, tell us what this all means. Give us some context. Sure thing, Bill. This is a collaboration with Microsoft and Quantenium where they applied their improved qubit visualization system and created an entangled 12 highly reliable logic qubits. So on the scoreboard, this represents the largest number of entangled logical qubits with the highest fidelity on record. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, on the biz dev side of business, and usually I think you can just throw money at problems to fix it, but uh, just really interested in your take. You know, Why is it challenging to build quantum computers with logical qubits and low error rates? Yeah, so, so the first thing that we talked about is what does this do to the timing of all of this? And it is like a, a space race, or I hate to say arms race, but every week we see an article like this where there are improvements in the technology. And every week I talk to customers and I still hear customers saying, isn't this something that's you know 10 years away, 15 years away? Why do we have to worry about the security behind quantum computing? And so every week when we get these articles, we think, okay, this is why, because these companies continue to evolve in a way that, that we can't even imagine. So uh, it was pretty big news out of Microsoft this week to uh, 3x the amount of reliable logical qubits that they're able to produce with Quantinium. So um, the, the thing to talk about here is you need a couple of things. You need the reliable logical qubits and, and you need them for the proper functioning of entangled logical qubits. And, and really there's, there's four reasons for that. So the first is error correction. So logical qubits are encoded using multiple physical qubits to protect against errors. So for quantum computers to maintain entanglement, and that's how they execute these complex operations, they have to reduce the errors, they have to minimize them. So if the logical qubits are unreliable, errors will propagate and then it potentially destroys the entanglement and invalidates the quantum computation. So that does nobody any good. Uh, the second thing here is around the entanglement in integrity. So entanglement is really a, a fragile quantum state and it requires consistent and precise manipulation of the qubits. So, if the logical qubits are not reliable, maintaining the precise correlations needed for entanglement becomes impossible. So that's why reliable logical qubits ensure that the entangled states remain stable and then they're intact and you can do it, do the, do the computations correctly. Um, third is this idea of fault tolerant quantum computing. So quantum computers use the entanglement qubits to perform parallel computations to achieve the quantum speed up. So fault tolerant designs rely on logical qubits to maintain entanglement over long periods. So even as the noise or the errors affect individual physical qubits without reliability, the quantum advantage gets lost. And then, and then last is this idea of quantum gates. So entangled qubits are, are manipulated through what's called quantum gates. And those require high precision to perform operations like super superposition or interference. So reliable logical qubits ensure that these operations are accurate and that preserves the entanglement throughout the quantum circuit. So a lot of big words to say that there are some really smart scientists out there and they are figuring out ways to reduce 
errors and to make this more stable um, so, so that we can more quickly get to a quantum computer that is useful in these massive, amazing computations. Yeah, I think what you could take from this is that we're, well, on the one hand, the danger is real because the march of progress is inexorable, right? People keep doing more and more reliable qubits. But also, in some ways, it feels like we're in the late 40s with the sort of Shockley and Bardeen desktop transistor. <laughs> um, and so uh, those two tensions are going to be super interesting to, to see as they uh, resolve. Yeah, for sure. So quick reminder, folks, you can find all the links to the articles mentioned today in the show notes. And if you want weekly quantum updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcasts on Spotify, Apple, YouTube Music, and iHeartRadio. Stay up to date with the top news in quantum with last week in quantum. Our second article is quantum uh, in the same vein in that quantum computing is evolving. Google says its quantum computer reduces errors in a major breakthrough. Brandon, give us the context. Yes, sir. Google's quantum computer reduces errors as it scales up, improving plot problem solving. Uh, the computer uses logical qubits with error correction, increasing the reliability. And the Google research posted says that a logical qubit with 105 physical qubits outperforms one with 72. Mm. Uh, again, similar, but I kind of like the uh, Microsoft making moves, Google making moves. So Elizabeth with Google, Microsoft, a lot of others rushing to build this uh, crypto analytically relevant quantum computer. Will you please look into your crystal ball and uh, talk to me, tell me when the timeline for the, the quantum computer development and when it's going to hit the market. Yeah, so one thing that's really interesting to me about this Google article is that they're combining faulty qubits to make them more reliable. And I just think back to high school algebra and it's, it's just the opposite to me. You know, if, if you're doing an equation in mathematics, you know, it, for, for most of us in the world that are, like myself are not quantum scientists, if you made one little error in calculation as you're going through, you know that everything's wrong and it never gets better. And it, it's kind of the opposite here. So they're putting together these faulty qubits and it makes them more reliable. And it, it just speaks to this is a whole new world that none of us can predict what, what's coming. And again, if I look into my crystal ball and I... I think about when these computers are going to be powerful enough to break the current encryption. And we know for sure that that's going to happen, which is, which is what QC care is in the business of fixing. Um, you know, I, I think we, we keep hearing anywhere from three to 10 years. And a lot of, a lot of folks I talked to, as I said in the beginning are saying, you know, it's 10 years away. Why worry about it? It's, it's not 10 years away. Um, and certainly some of the things that were talked about in the, the Microsoft article and some of the partnerships that they're forming here are to be able to make this technology and the applications that are going to run on this technology uh, more available. It also, also talks about some of the import-export controls that are being put into place here so that we can't be exporting some of this technology and quantum to, to other countries uh, because we, they, we don't want them to beat us in this race. Um, on the other hand, we know that China is, is outspending us forex uh, in this space. So somebody is going to continue to reduce the errors, reduce the noise, uh, increase the reliable logical qubits faster than than we think they're going to. So for folks saying 10 years, I, I just wouldn't risk my business on that. Uh, for folks saying five years, I, I think that's where I would put my bet. And the issue with that is that we know that the last time that we had to upgrade our encryption standards, it took more than five years to do that, to go to RSA uh, back in the 1980s. So this is the world's highly sensitive data. This is corporate secrets. This is government secrets at risk. I would hedge my bet on sooner rather than later, and that it might not be the folks that you want it to be that, that get this fixed first. And, and so while well, we've got the Googles and the Microsofts and the large companies of the world uh, working on this and working on it for good, we also have adversaries that are working on this uh, in, in, in a lot of cases at spending on this. Uh, and again, when, when they crack this code uh, and, and they can decode uh, our risky data, they're they're not going to announce it. They're not going to say, "Hey, we cracked the code and we can do this now." And, and we've just 
you know, decrypted all that sensitive data that we've been collecting for years. They're just going to do it and they're going to start using it. So don't put your data at risk. There are really simple ways, eh, maybe not simple, but simple enough to get um, to get put into place now to protect against that and, and not have to worry uh, about this in, in a few years time. Excellent. Great answer. Uh, so folks, you've a great episode today talking about the future of quantum computing and how it's actually a lot closer than we think. That's all for today's show. I'm your host, Bill Roth. And with us this week has been the power crew of Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations, and Elizabeth Green, SVP of Customers and Ecosystems of Q-Secure. Thank you to you both. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. All right, folks, we'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum. <laughs> <laughs>